Good morning, everybody. I want to do a little sound check, make sure you guys can all hear me this morning. And let me know where you're from by typing in the questions box. Where are you located? And we got Julie from Las Cruces, New Mexico. We've got Michael joining us, somebody from Staten Island, New North Carolina, Dallas, Mobile, Mobile, Alabama, Sun Peaks, Maine, Oregon, Canada, Minneapolis, all over the U.S. And so I got a fun story about Oregon real quickly. So have you guys heard of morel mushrooms? Yeah, like if you've heard of morel mushrooms, you know they're awesome. And they're also really hard to get, right? So last weekend, I bought some morel mushrooms from somebody that got them in Oregon <laughs> because they're not available around here anymore. They've been gone for about the last three weeks. You can only get them a few weeks out of the year, and they're really good. So I bought this bag of morel mushrooms, and they were so good. But anyway, they were from Oregon, <laughs> so I was thrilled to get them. So we've got people all over the U.S. as well as um, – We've got some, it looks like, from Canada. We've got somebody from Italy. Wonderful. I hope to get to Italy someday. And, yes, this is good for Canada as well. Today is good for anybody, no matter where you are located. So thank you all for joining us. Somebody says I'm echoing. You should maybe turn off the sound on your computer speakers if you've called in. Um, turn that off so that there won't be an echo. Um, but, yes, today is definitely good regardless of where you're located. So with that said, it's going to be quiet for a few seconds. I'm going to then um, – so I'll pause for five seconds and then we'll officially start, okay? So, whoops, hold on. It still says start the broadcast. There we go. All right. Good morning for another QB Power Hour. Today's topic is becoming an invaluable and irreplaceable pro advisor. So I'm very glad to have you joining me for this Power Hour today, regardless of where you're located. My name is Michelle Long. I am a CPA and the owner of Long for Success. I've had my own business for 20-some years now. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of changes over the years. And that's some of what we're going to be talking about today is how things are changing, how it impacts us as an accounting professional, and how you can continue you to thrive because my practice is nothing today is nothing like it was when I first started my business it's changed and evolved many times over the years and that's what we're talking about today is becoming invaluable and irreplaceable um, I'm the author of five different books the QB um, QuickBooks online practice set was recently updated um, so if you want to check that out get more practice using QuickBooks online go check that out at, at Amazon there's also one out there for desktop as well you can check those out um, so thank you for joining me that's enough about me and Dan DeLong who's been helping us and joining us lately he is currently hiking with his son in the Grand Canyon so it's hard to get a signal down there so Dan is not joining us this um, this time but we wish him luck and hope that he is safe many years ago my family we hiked half the way into the Grand Canyon and back out so it was a one-day hike and it's like reverse mountain climbing and we only did six miles and it's it's strenuous Dan's going all the way to the bottom and camping at the bottom so I can't wait to hear about it because I would have liked to have done that but we didn't get a chance to so he'll join us hopefully on the next one so a little bit of update about the QB Power Hours in case you haven't been joining us in a while you'll notice Hector and I have made some changes um, I am going to continue QB Power Hours but it's no longer offering CPE at least not at the current time so no CPE at the current time that is a very time-consuming process doing CPE credits and we just, just discovered that it's really not that valuable for us because a lot of our attendees will attend, um, not necessarily because of the CPE, because it's great content. Um, I would also encourage you to join us in the Facebook group. We've changed the name of that to QB Power Users Community. Hector and I are going to continue to share and, and participate in that group together. So um, he and I are both using it. Um, now the topics, we're going to continue to cover QuickBooks tips, but we're also going to talk about what's new, troubleshooting, some practice management topics like we're discussing today. Um, we've done a session that touches on marketing. We've done some on pricing. We'll do some on third-party apps. So we're going to cover more than just QuickBooks topics um, in these webinars for QB Power Hour. And every time, though, it's, it's a goal of something that will be helpful and useful to you in your practice and to help make you successful. You can always find the PDF of the slides at that URL, that tiny.cc 
slash QE Power Hour handouts, that has the handouts from the whole year. So if you missed a session previously and you want to go get the PowerPoint slides from that, you can go download those at that location. And then the recordings will all be at my YouTube channel. I encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you can get an email notification when the, the um, video has been updated. So you can check that out um, if you'd like to. So bookmark those sites and check them out as needed. Now, some upcoming events. As I mentioned, the QB Power Hour webinar ser series, we're doing it every other Thursday. Now, some of you that joined me last time, we mentioned that we were going to have Rich Priest on joining us today. And unfortunately, Rich, Rich had um, a scheduling conflict, so he's not able to be here. We were going to have him on June 13th, but unfortunately, I'm going to be traveling that day. So we do still plan to have Rich Freeze and talk more and answer more questions and, and on the topic of QB Live and what's going on there because it continues to change and evolve. Like It seems like every week or every two weeks, um, there's new things. And so what, what, it, what it was is it's evolving. Um, so we will talk about that more, um, but I, like I said, I'm traveling home on the 13th, so I probably will not be doing that. Um, Hector's advanced webinars are on the third Thursday of each month. So he's doing one monthly webinar. It's called Hector's Advanced Webinars, and it is a two-hour webinar, and you can get CPE for paid subscribers. Um, so that's what Hector is doing now. And then also I'd encourage you to check out the QuickBooks VCon as well as the Roadshow that's going on, particularly if you're not certified yet. The QuickBooks VCon, we just did one in May. There's going to be another one coming up in June. Um, and I believe the one in June is covering the certification, recertification, advanced certification, which we're going to talk about some of that today. If you're not certified, you should be. But the VCon also talks about other topics, like sometimes it's marketing, sometimes value pricing. Around year end, it might be QuickBooks at year end. So check out those um, those VCons as well as the Roadshow. The Roadshow started, I think it was last week, um, going to various cities around you. Now, I haven't been able to travel yet. I'm starting next week. I'm going down to Atlanta. I'm just doing one one town my first week out um, because I don't know if some of you may have missed it, but I had foot surgery. It's been nine weeks now. I'm sort of walking. <laughs> I'm 50% weight-bearing, which means I have to use crutches or my mom's cane. I borrowed her cane. So I'm not walking normal yet, and it hurts like you can't believe, especially at the end of the day when it's swollen and it's very painful. So that's why I'm sitting here at my kitchen table instead of up in my office because I don't want to go up and down the stairs. And it's hard for me to carry my computer and stuff up and down the stairs. So here we are at my kitchen table, and I'm glad to have you joining me. Um, but check out those, those live training events in various cities across the U.S. at qbtraininginvents.com. Those are free, and we're covering the certifications, the advanced certifications, the recertifications, all of those in a variety of cities. I mentioned I'm going to Atlanta. I'm going to a couple cities near San Diego, Torrance, and Temecula in California. I'm going down to Houston and Memphis, and I'm also going to Long Island. But there's a number of other cities and other trainers in other cities. So go check those out. And the live events that Intuit puts on there are always great, and it is free. So check those out. Also, if you're able to join us, we'd love to have you join us at Scaling New Heights. That's coming up in June. And, of course, QuickBooks Connect in San Jose will be coming up in November. We'd love to have you join us for that as well. So what we're talking about today specifically is we're going to be getting into what are the changes going on in our industry. <clears throat> and I mentioned to you that, you know, I started my practice a long time ago. I've seen a lot of changes, and there have been periods of time where there's been kind of major changes and others where it kind of was smooth and calm for a while. We're going through some major changes right now. So we're going to talk about some of that, how that impacts us. We'll talk about preparing to be invaluable and irreplaceable for our clients strengthening the client relationship, and expanding our advisory services. This was really hard for me to get this into one hour. <laughs> so we're hitting on the highlights of all of these. And as you have interest and would like to know more about different areas, let me know, and we'll consider doing a one-hour webinar on those in the future. So let's talk about some of these changes um, from the technology that I just mentioned. So if you think about what's going on about there, think about the news websites. You know, you can go to all these websites now to get the news. Think about the impact that that has done on newspapers and magazines. 
the print media is dying. It's it's shrinking and it's dying because everything's available online now from various websites, things like that. Think about the impact Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime have had on movie theaters. You'll see movie theaters changing it up now to try to keep people coming in and spending money at the theater. For example, you know now they have recliners in them. Some of them sell alcohol. Some of them have like a play area with slides where the kids can play in the play area for a half an hour before the movie starts, wear them out so they're good and tired before the movie and they'll be quiet and sit still. Um, but so the movie theaters are trying to change and evolve to help keep people coming to the theater. LinkedIn, Monster, Indeed.com, these online uh, sites have changed and impacted recruiters when it comes to, to finding and placing people with jobs. So recruiters have been impacted. The travel websites have affected the travel agents. It, it, it changed their business tremendously. Uber and Lyft, you know, if you were a limo driver, now people are taking, you know, Uber Black. So you'll see limo drivers who are also driving for Uber and Lyft when they don't have a ride for their limo service. So they're filling in their free time and their free hours with rides from Uber or Lyft. You know, I've taken an Uber X before, which is the cheapest one, Uber X, and I'll get, you know, a black, black car, you know, a town car, a nice like limo type of car, um, because that driver is a limo driver, but he just didn't have any rides right then, so he'll do he'll drive for Uber or Lyft, so that he keeps busy and doesn't have downtime. Airbnb is impacting hotels. Amazon and e-commerce. Think about the, what that has done for our local retailers and the impact there. And so a lot of local stores have had to really change and fight back. For example, um, there's a local bookstore here and a lot of local bookstores died when you had Amazon and Borders and Barnes and Noble and all these big bookstores and particularly Amazon because that's the one that survived. Bookstores had a hard time. Well, there's a local bookstore um, here called Rainy Day Books. And they realized they had to change and evolve. And what they started doing was being more of a community for book lovers and people who love books and reading books. And they would have book clubs where people would come in and meet. And I, I know you can do some of that on Amazon. And there's some communities out there and stuff. But it's not the same as, as sitting in a circle and, and talking about a book. They also, Rainy Day Books, had these huge book signing events where they partnered with other small businesses. And it would be a big party around an author in a book signing. And so they found ways to remain relevant and keep people coming back to them that made them invaluable and irreplaceable. Amazon couldn't do what Rainy Day Books was doing because they were able to differentiate themselves. And so that's where technology is changing and it's impacting everything in our lives and it's also impacting our business. So our industry is changing. And I don't know, you know, some of you are my age. Some of you remember way back when, back in the, you know, the old ages, when, uh, when the PCs first started coming out. You'll see that second picture on there. We, we got the mainframe on the far left. And that second picture is like the IBM, gosh, I can't forget it, IBM XT, AT, I don't remember, the desktop computers when they first came out. And then the software first came out, and it was um, – Things like, you know, OneWrite Plus or DAC Easy, MYOB, or uh, Quicken came out and then turned into QuickBooks. But the software came out, and us in the accounting industry, accountants and bookkeepers were like, oh, my God, you know, now the clients are going to be able to do it themselves because they have the software. They can do it themselves. This is going to kill my business because they're not going to need me anymore. But what really happened is they screwed it up. <laughs> they made lots of mistakes. They quickly realized they're not an accountant. They're not a bookkeeper. They don't know what they're doing. They made mistakes. Then they realized they still need us, right? They realized that we are invaluable and irreplaceable because we've got knowledge that they can't do on their own. And so it didn't eliminate the need for us. It did change the relationship and how we work with clients because once the software came along, sometimes we were collaborating with clients and they would be entering some things and we would be entering things as well instead of us just getting the information after the fact at the end of the month and then putting it all in. So technology has changed and impacted the accounting industry how we work with our clients, it has been an impact and we have transitioned over the years and that's what we've been going through over the past like five years. 
there's been an increase in the automation and going to the cloud. With QuickBooks Online, with all these third-party third apps, it has changed how we're working with our clients, and it has changed you know, the avail availability of the software and the technology for these small businesses with all these third-party apps and everything in the cloud. So it's made a huge change. It is eliminating manual data entry. There is no reason anybody should be doing getting a checkbook and entering those checks or getting the bank statement and entering those transactions manually. There's no need for that anymore. You can import and download you can download and import those transactions. You can take a PDF bank statement, turn that into a file to import into QuickBooks. So that manual data entry is gone. We can now automate an invoice. Let's say you got a landlord with 50 tenants. You can automate the invoice to auto send to those tenants every single month and then if you're using QuickBooks payments the tenant can click pay now QuickBooks will automatically record the payment received any fees associated with it and the deposit in your bank account then that deposit matches when it comes through that whole process is automated nobody did anything the whole workflow is automated no data entry there so the technology changes is changing our work and if you're not changing with it you're quickly becoming obsolete and where you know the technology is taking over your position and now we're dealing with artificial intelligence ai you know a lot of you use um siri or the equivalent for apple or um or i'm sorry for for uh, Android devices and Samsung devices and things and Alexa. Um, so we've got all these artificial intelligence devices. Well, QuickBooks is working on one as well. It's called QuickBooks Assistant. And you can ask it, you can say, hey, you know, QuickBooks Assistant, how much do I have in my bank account? How much did I make this month? How much does that compare to what I made last year this month? And you, you can ask it these questions and it will give you the answers. If you want to see a video and a demo of it, just Google QuickBooks Assistant and click on videos and you'll see some from previous QuickBooks Connect where they have demonstrated this. This is already live and working with QuickBooks Small, uh, QBO Small Self-Employed, sorry, QBO Self-Employed has QuickBooks Assistant. And so they don't have to call us and ask us what did I make last month, they can ask the QuickBooks Assistant. So this is where we have to realize technology is changing and impacting our practice. And you know, I've been, I've had the privilege of, of training for Intuit for 11 years now. And I know about five years ago, we were really, we were doing um, something about, you know, QuickBooks in the cloud, uh, freedom in the cloud. We were doing the freedom in the cloud webinars back about five years ago. Then we went to firm of the future a couple, two, three years ago when we were talking about a firm of the future. And now we're seeing things changing again. I mean, this has been changing for about five years or more, and some people are just now getting to the cloud. So as we're talking about that, let me go ahead and launch this poll question. So let me launch this poll question. How do you feel about QuickBooks Online and changes in the accounting industry moving to the cloud? What are your thoughts on that, and how do you feel about that? Because this is happening, and so we want to kind of know um, how you feel about it. All right, and I'm going to look at some of these. Oh, Kim says she just started without a walker last week. Been a long two months. Oh, Kim, you know what I'm going through. You know, I got so excited when the doctor said, oh, you can start walking and you can start doing this and that. The key was I didn't listen. He said, as tolerated. <laughs> My foot doesn't tolerate as much as I would like to do, so it's slowing me down. Um, so anyway. Somebody says, don't mind the cloud, but will not convert to QBO unless QBDT becomes obsolete. And Sonia, I would, I would love to know why, um, because I don't think QBDT, QB Desktop will ever become obsolete. I think it's always going to be there because there's still four or five million people using it. Well, I don't know. I can't say five, ten years from now, but QuickBooks Online, and I used to be a desktop user since I started teaching desktop in 1999. I wrote books about desktop. I co-authored the advanced cert on desktop, long-time desktop user. Until I learned QuickBooks Online and the navigating tips and tricks um, and how to do some of that, which we covered in a previous QB Power Hour about a month ago, go check those out. It makes a huge difference. Now, I would never want to go back to QuickBooks Desktop. It seems old and clunky and 
just awful, honestly. Um, so check out some of those um, things like that. And yes, you can move QuickBooks Desktop to the cloud. You can do a, a conversion to move that to the cloud. All right, let's go ahead and I'm gonna close this poll question and I do wanna share the results with you because it's interesting. So 64% of you say you were hesitant at first, but now uh, you embrace it. And that's the way I was. I was hesitant at first until I learned those navigating tips and tricks, until I learned how to work in QBO just as fast as I could in desktop. I was hesitant at first as well. And now I love and embrace it. So 64% of us, 23% of you still aren't sure. And to me, I think that means you need to learn more. You need to learn more about online and the cloud and those navigating tips and tricks and things like that. 10% are very reluctant and skeptical and 3% says never trust online and don't like the cloud. You know, the reality of it is your data in the cloud is safer and more secure than in QuickBooks desktop files. Um, so, but there's always going to be a percentage that I'm not changing. You know, I remember a lot of my clients saying that when we were talking about online banking. I'm not doing online banking. That's not safe. Now they just take a picture of their check and it goes into the bank account. And they don't even go to the bank anymore. So they've changed their tune as, you know, as the industry is changing and technology has changed. So um, let me see a couple of other comments in here. No more problems with getting backup files. That's right. Um, so no more issues with getting backup files. Somebody says, hesitant is our reluctance to change. Yes, you're right. People are reluctant to change, aren't they? Um, somebody says that they need another answer. They want QuickBooks Online modified. And they say, it's not my favorite. I'd like to know what it is you don't like about it and what doesn't work. Um, go ask that question out in the um, Facebook community. Lots of people will share things and sometimes Things that you don't like, maybe because you're not aware of how you can do it in QuickBooks Online. So go do that. So very, very good. Thank you. Let me hide that poll question. Let's get back into our slides. So thank you, and thanks for putting some of those questions out there. Um, so somebody said, with all this automation and assistant, where does our value come in? Fabulous question. Thank you. Um, we're going to talk about that. And then somebody else says, I don't like all the advertising QuickBooks Online does. You know what? I love the advertising QuickBooks does because QuickBooks spends, I don't know how much, tens of millions of dollars on advertising. You see the Danny DeVito ads out there and, and things like that. Your clients see that. That's advertising for me. I can't afford to spend that much money. I play off of QuickBooks coattails. They do all the advertising, get small business owners to start using QuickBooks, and then they realize they don't know what they're doing, just like they did 20 or 30 years ago when they were going you know, to the, I, the IBM PC and they were going to do it on their own. They quickly realize they don't know what they're doing. That has not changed. So QuickBooks spending tens of million dollars advertising and getting new users to QuickBooks Online who quickly realize, I need help, that's where we need to be poised and ready to be there to help them to be the invaluable and irreplaceable pro advisor. And that's what we're going to talk about in, in the rest of the webinar. So in addition, though, to technology changes, competition is changing. Did you know there are people overseas in, in different countries that will do bookkeeping for $5 an hour? Five bucks an hour. We cannot and do not want to compete with that. We can't compete based on price, and we don't want to. We want to be more valuable to our clients than that. And bookkeeping service is becoming a commodity. And I saw this, it was about five, maybe six years ago, I had the privilege of going down to New Zealand to a conference down there, and I went and visited some of these firms in New Zealand. Five or six years ago, I saw somebody several people. I saw people creating a bookkeeping firm or an accounting firm that were, they were utilizing Xero at the time because that was really big down in, in um, New Zealand. They were using Xero. So they were automating the process on the downloaded transactions, things like that. The guy hired three, four, five bookkeepers or accountants. He himself didn't know accounting and bookkeeping at all. But those four or five bookkeepers handled hundreds and hundreds of clients because they set it up like McDonald's. They had the processes and the procedures automated, bam, bam, bam. They had everything working smooth as silk. You only had to deal with things that were out of the norm. And so he had a very lucrative, thriving business, minimal headcount, minimal people, and he himself wasn't an accountant. 
And so these firms and some of these people down in New Zealand and um, Australia are way ahead of us on this aspect. Now here in the U.S., people are doing this now and we're starting to realize that. But we need to be set up so that we're not seen as a commodity. All right. We don't want it to be like, you know, every oil change where you go get your oil change. And it's no big deal which one you go to. They all do the same thing. We need to differentiate ourselves and we need to be prepared so that we are invaluable and we are irreplaceable. So that's what we have to keep in mind as we move forward and talk about these things. So first of all, you have to be prepared. All right. If you want to be an invaluable and irreplaceable pro advisor, you have to you have to have the stuff. You have to have the good. You have to be able to back it up. You have to have knowledge and certification. So you, you have to have accounting and bookkeeping knowledge. I know the one guy down in New Zealand did not, but the people he hired did. So you do need to have some accounting and bookkeeping skills. You know, the, the one thing um, about the, the uh, market right now is a lot of people are wanting to start their own business. Um, and so you'll see people who want to get into accounting and bookkeeping because it's easy. Right? It's relatively low cost to start your own business. We don't have to have high overhead, high, high um, uh, equipment costs and things like that. We need a computer. We need some software. We can work from anywhere. We're good to go. But we need to make sure we have that accounting and bookkeeping knowledge. So if you don't, um, check out becoming a certified bookkeeper from the AIPB. You can do online training from Penn Foster to learn bookkeeping to be a, help you to take the certified bookkeeping test. Um, but if you aren't, if you don't have that background and that knowledge, get it. All right. Also, just because you're a CPA doesn't mean you know QuickBooks. I'm a CPA. I don't know the tax laws. I don't know the, all the rules and regulations for S-Corps and partnerships and all this stuff. I'm not a tax expert just because I'm a CPA. Just because you're a CPA or any other accountant or, pro, or professional doesn't mean you know QuickBooks. Become a QuickBooks certified pro advisor and not just certified, but do that advanced certification. All right. That really differentiates you and makes you stand out from the crowd. And um, the other thing is once you get core certified, once you become certified, those certified bookkeepers, certified QuickBooks Pro Advisors have a 20 to 25 percent higher billing rate than if you're not certified. The advanced certified Pro Advisors have 46 percent higher billing rate than somebody who's not certified. So you can increase your rates and your how valuable you are to those clients by taking those certifications. All it requires from you is time, all right? And the advanced certification, in my opinion, it's easier than it ever has been, but it is still challenging. It is very passable. The biggest hindrance to people getting advanced certified is the time commitment because it does take time. So when I mentioned to you the, the certification training that's going on in various cities around the U.S., the training that's on the VCon, or you can do the self-paced training, but I encourage you to do that. If you are not a member of the Pro Advisor program yet, you want to join it. It's free for the QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor program. There's the link for it. Join that. Work on the certifications. Also, and these last two kind of go together, third-party app training and certifications as well as industry specialization. Remember, we want to be invaluable for these clients. So we need to understand their business. We need to relate to them and be able to talk in their, their language and the terminology that they use for their industry. If you're dealing with retailers, you need to understand sales per square foot, things like that. If you're dealing with a restaurant, you know, they talk about table turn rates and things like that. Um, job costing when it comes to um, uh, construction clients, you need to know the lingo. So you want to learn and get some of that industry specializations. And so for that, you can check out various, there's an association for everything. <laughs> I'm serious. There's actually an encyclopedia of associations. Like if you go to the library, there's an encyclopedia of associations because there's so many associations. There is an association of everything. I would venture a guess there's an association of dog walkers or pet sitters <laughs> because there's this one out there for everything. So check out their websites, their conferences, the publications and newsletters that they put out, social media groups on LinkedIn. 
LinkedIn or on Facebook. You can learn the language and some of the things from that industry by doing some of that. But then also along with the industry specialization are the third-party apps that apply to that in industry. A lot of these third-party apps realize the importance of having us as, as a pro advisors to understand their app and implement it with clients so they provide us a lot of them I can't say all of them they provide us with free training and some of them offer certification as well so you can really expand your knowledge base so this is one of the things here um, is being having the base to be irreplaceable and having the the goods to back it up and so um, what I'm going to do now I'm going to go ahead and launch another poll question and as a reminder these poll questions are not for CPE purposes. They're to get a gauge of kind of where you guys are, what you're thinking, and let you see what each other is thinking as well. Um, so let's see what some of these questions are. That Somebody says, what was the organization for the certified bookkeeper? AIPB, that stands for American Institute of Professional Bookkeepers. That's the one that has the best reputation. It's listed in the Census Bureau Labor Statistics or something like that. Um, it's been around a long time, has a very good reputation. There are others out there as well. I just know the AIPB is, is the one cited by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics and things like that. Um, and they, they don't offer bookkeeping training, they offer the bookkeeping certification. The training you can get, like there's an online um, company called Penn Foster, I think they're still around, I haven't checked in the last year or so. Um, but they offer online training at a reasonable price um, and again, have a good reputation. So, and this is where you got to be careful um, because some people put these things out there and they, they may not be as reputable. Um, so you want to do your research on some of that stuff. Um, so somebody says they've taken the first exam of four to be a certified bookkeeper. Um, is the certified tra is the training from Penn Foster one on one or an online class? Um, Sherry, I'm pretty sure it's online classes. However, a lot of times when you've got an online training course like that, they have like office hours, like with the, the instructor of the course and things like that. They sometimes have class discussion areas and things like that. So if you have questions, need additional help, you can check into that as well. Um, and this is great. Thank you, Michael. Join a Woodard group also. Absolutely. Somebody just passed the certification test this month. Now, next up, advanced. Way to go, Mike. Congratulations. Um, and somebody says AIP do, AIPB does have training books and testing at the test center. Thank you for that clarification, Michelle. They do have training books, and that would be self-study. So if you're good at self-study and understanding it, that might work for you. If you need somebody to explain it to you to be able to ask questions, you might want an online training course like Penn Foster. And again, you need to know what's right for you based on your needs, how you learn, um, and things like that. So very good. And somebody, somebody is certified through someone else, and I would just be worried a little bit about those. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. The founders of some organizations are in jail for tax fraud and not paying all their payroll taxes and things like that. So do your research on organizations. Let's just say that. Um, all right. And so somebody says QBO Advanced Certificate say considered under great while CPA is under OK. No, you know, I know being a CPA, I am a CPA, that is invaluable, that is great, all right, and, and that is fabulous that you learned the CPA exam, um, and like I like to say, it stands for couldn't pass again, <laughs> that's great, but just because you're a CPA doesn't mean that you know QuickBooks, so I encourage you still to get that advanced QuickBooks certification, you know, because in, in when you're learning CPA in college, when you're taking the courses to become a CPA in college and everything, they don't teach you about QuickBooks stuff like undeposited funds or opening balance equity. That is not the type of things that you're going to learn taking classes and, and working towards your CPA um, credential. So that's why I'm not minimizing a CPA at all. I'm just saying there's additional skill sets that you can learn through that advanced certification. So I did not mean to minimize it at all. So um, hopefully that didn't come across that way. Um, and then somebody says, check out those organizations, yes. Um, and it says you can tell very quickly whether the CPA or accounting firm knows QuickBooks. Exactly. You know, I've followed up behind a CPA where there was hundreds and thousands of items sitting in undeposited funds because the, the CPA didn't understand QuickBooks. So 
Um, enough of that though. All right, so let's share your results. How are your certifications currently? 29% um, of you are great, 46% not bad, 12% okay. Um, you don't have the QuickBooks certification. And again, I didn't mean to minimize the CPA there. I was focusing on the QuickBooks aspect of things. 10% needs improvement and 3% NA. So very good. Thank you for answering that. And again, you know, when I'm putting these answers into questions, sometimes I don't think through all of the ramifications. So don't get too upset about that. So to, one of the things to be invaluable and irreplaceable is having the background, having the skill set, having that knowledge base so that you're prepared to be invaluable and irreplaceable. You also need to make sure that you've got your brand and your pricing set up. You need to have a brand. People, like if you meet people or they want to know more about you, they're going to go check you out on your website. They're going to check out your brand. They may check you out on Facebook or LinkedIn, things like that. You want to make sure that you have your brand established, that it's cohesive and professional. You want consistency across your website and your social media platforms, things like that. We talked about that and gave examples of that. Um, and so you can check that out from a previous QB Power Hour a month or two ago. Dan and I did that. Um, and we used Dan as an example and talked about some things that could be improved. We always have room for improvement, including myself. Um, so I know I have areas to work on as well. But check that out. And part of your brand is your pricing. We want to make sure your pricing corresponds with your brand. If your brand is talking about we are quality experts in uh, construction industry and blah, 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 and then your pricing is really cheap, that's not consistent with your image. We don't want really cheap prices. That sends a negative, a negative perception to the client. For example, if you're calling a plumber and you call one plumber and they're like, oh, it's $75 for an hour for me. I'm 85 an hour. Another plumber says I'm 35 an hour. Wow, 35 an hour, that's really cheap. But wait a minute, does he know what he's doing? Is he going to do the job right or am I going to have a leak when he leaves? I question his credibility, his, his knowledge, his expertise, because he's not in the normal range. We don't want to be low cost. All right, you don't want to set your prices too low. And I talked a lot about this um, in one of these power hours, the, the bottom link there. Um, setting your prices too low is a common mistake that a lot of us make because we make excuses. But I work from home, but I'm just getting started, but I, but I, but I. We make all these excuses why our prices have to be lower than average, and we need to, to get over that and stop doing that and realize the value that we really have. So. Check that out and also check out the average billing rates to see are you in the ballpark of where others are, where your peers are. We surveyed over a thousand people asking them what are the average billing rates that you charge, including what are some of the fixed fees that you would charge for this fictional client. So check some of those out as well. There's a link there in, um, to my blog post, and that includes several different articles from the billing rate survey, as well as a link to a power hour where we talked about the survey results. So we want to make sure that we've got pricing that corresponds with how valuable we are, as well as a good brand and stuff. We, we've got to have that. That's our, part of our preparation is have all of our ducks in a row before we're working on um, really being invaluable and irreplaceable. The next step is strengthening those client relationships. This is key. You know, I don't get on the Intuit community forums much like I used to, um, but I used to be out there a lot, and I would see people posting a question out on the internet in a community group saying, you know, my accountant said I should do this journal entry or I should do that. How do I actually do that? And I'd be like, well, why don't you ask your accountant? Oh, no, no, they'd charge me. I, I don't want to call them. I'm afraid to. So you have people that are, they have an accountant, but they're turning to strangers on the Internet who may or may not know accounting, bookkeeping, QuickBooks, and they're asking them a question because they're afraid to contact their accountant. Either they don't want to be billed for it, my accountant can't explain it to me. My accountant doesn't want to help me with these small little questions. They're too busy for that. So there's perceptions that the client has why they can't contact you. That's not building a good, strong client relationship. You are not invaluable. I answered questions out in the community, and they said, you know, you're great at explaining this. Would you be my new accountant? You know, you're going to lose these clients. Um, so that's something we really want to be aware of. We have to strengthen this client relationship, and we do not want our clients afraid to call us. So one of the things that I recommend is that we build support options and packages 
into all of the services that we offer. Now, when you're building these, these support options and packages, you can determine what you want to offer the client, but you need to realize how valuable the client likes, how valuable it is to the client. And I got an example of that. I have to put the little story on here so I don't forget. So years ago, um, I was working with a client and I had trained his bookkeeper. It was a construction company. I trained the bookkeeper how to do the job costing and how to enter and pay, you know, the bills and do the payroll and all this stuff. And I had told them that I would be on vacation next week because it's spring break. We were going on a ski trip. So Friday afternoon, I'm like, all right, bye guys. See you after I get back from my vacation. And they're like, what? The, the owner of the company, he was like, what? You can't go on vacation. What if she has questions? I said, Chad, I, told, I think it was Chad. Anyway, I told him, I said, look, I told you I was on vacation next week, and, you know, I've talked to her, and if she has questions, she's going to write them down, and we'll go over them next, the next week when I come back. And he says, no, no, you've got to be available, because she won't be able to enter things. She won't be able to do things. You can't leave. You've got to be available for questions. I said, dude, it's a ski trip. I'm going. Anyway, so he said, why can't you be on call? I said, what? On call? I hadn't thought of that before. This was before we had remote access and the Internet the way we do now, right? So I said, well, what did you have in mind? He says, well, she calls and has a question. You call her back and answer a question. I'm like, have you ever been on a lift, a ski lift? You got these big gloves on and these goggles, and sometimes a helmet and everything. I can't just answer the phone because if I drop it from the lift, I never find it again. I'll get lost in the snow. He says, all right, you call her back within 30 minutes to an hour. And I said, well, you know, I do have to rest up once in a while, get some hot cocoa or a hot toddy once in a while. I said, what did you have in mind? He says, well, I'll pay you $1,000 over and above your regular fees just to be on call. I'm like, done. <laughs> I will do that. It was very valuable to him to know that I was available if they needed me. It was an insurance policy. You know, why do we pay for insurance? You know how many times she actually called me? Twice. She called me two times, and that was like the first day. After that, she didn't call at all because, you know, they just wanted to know I was there if she needed me, all right? And so we need to realize from the client's perspective, it's very valuable to have you there for questions. QuickBooks Assistant can't answer everything. QuickBooks Assistant can't listen to them. Sometimes they just need to rant and rave about, my supplier increased their prices and blah, blah, blah. I don't know what I'm going to do. My costs are going up. And I, you know, sometimes they need somebody to talk to about the problems they're having, whether it's with QuickBooks, whether it's with managing their business, they need to know you're there for them. And this is where if we offer them support options or packages, we can give them that insurance package and keep them from turning to strangers on the Internet. So one thing you want to focus on is defining what's a quick answer versus a quick question, right? How many times have we heard, oh, Michelle, I just have a quick question, right? Well, a quick question may be, you know, half an hour or more to answer it because I need more information. I have to ask more questions. I have to look into it and see what's going on or whatever. Quick question doesn't mean a quick answer. A quick answer is, you know, how do I do this? And you can answer it in two or three sentences and you can send them a quick text or a quick message or, or whatever. So quick answer versus quick questions. Definitely build in some remote support sessions. All right. And again, whether this is QuickBooks related or, or running and managing their business, have support sessions and you might have where you get a package of four per month you know maybe that's one a week and it's a 15 excuse me 15 minute session or 30 minute session or something like that you know you determine what's right and you might want different levels of packages where they have the basic package versus the white glove top of the line package right so you can create support options and packages for these clients. And then also I like to have meetings with the clients on a periodic basis maybe quarterly where you're talking about the results, what's going on, what problems and issues are they having, and we'll talk about some of the consulting stuff um, in a couple of slides here, but you talk to them about their business and how it's working. You want to be their partner, right? We're the financial partner and advisor to their business to help them grow their business, and we want them to turn to us when they have questions. We also can streamline our communications with these clients to help you know, email is becoming snail mail, right? Email is becoming the snail mail today, and people are turning to other communication methods with the clients. For example, Slack. 
um, people are starting to use an app called Slack instead of email. And you, so instead of email and text messages and calls, things like that, it's all in one location with Slack. And Slack integrates with QuickBooks Online. You actually can, in QuickBooks, say, here's something you're supposed to do. So like client, um, you know, go through the, the downloaded transactions and, and add and match them. Maybe the client's doing that. So you can actually assign work to somebody from QuickBooks and it sends it out through Slack telling them about the work that they've been assigned. Or you can share files with them through Slack. So you can create a separate channel for each client. That way you and your team has access and the client has access as well. All the communications are in one central location. There's an app for that so it's on your mobile device. So instead of going to an email app or going to texting, they can go to Slack and do it out there. So. You know, this is where people are changing how we communicate with the clients. We want to be readily available to these clients and, and have that relationship where they're not afraid to call us, right? We don't want them afraid to contact us. And so that's one of the things like on the quick answer, if it is a quick answer, I don't charge for that. I don't consider that. I, I just, I do that building up goodwill, right? Because it does, it's not in my interest to track, you know, five, six minute increments um, for billing clients. It just doesn't make sense. So these are ideas. I'm trying to get you thinking what's going to work and help you in strengthening those client relationships. Because I know a lot of us aren't outgoing and we're not, you know, at the point where we want to pick up the phone and call the client just out of the blue. So if you had a package that says once a month, we're going to talk and visit about your financials, you know, it's like, hey, you know, it, it's it's a win-win for both. The client wins because they're getting your time and your attention, and you win, it's easier to call them and contact them because it's part of the services that you offer. And so I encourage you to consider this, um, and, and it will help you have a closer relationship with that client. All right, so that's some of the things, um, some of the things that are out there. Somebody says Slack is not showing up in the apps tab of QBOA. So, um, Michael, let me just, uh, let me pop in here and uh, go into, uh, we're under the accountant area under work. So hopefully, yeah, you guys can see my QuickBooks. When you're in QuickBooks and um, you come under here under the work tab, so I'm in QuickBooks Online Accountant. You know that because of the green bar across the top. The work tab on the left navigation bar, see where it says notifications? That's where you can go in and, and connect Slack. Come on. I did click on that. Why is it not? There it goes. It's just slow today. All right. So this is where you click on notifications. You can go up out there and you can connect Slack and set that up out there. So you can have email work notifications or here's where you can go into Slack and connect Slack. So you don't find it in the app store per se. You find it right here under work and under notifications. And I did a QB Power Hour about a year ago and demoed some of that. And if this is something that people want to know more about, let me know um, in the comments and you know we can consider doing that on an upcoming webinar. All right. Now another thing is we're talking about these client relationships um, is that we want to have multiple touch points throughout the year. You don't want to be in a situation where you do their books at year end and that's it. You don't see them the rest of the year. Because they, 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 there's no strong loyalty, no strong relationship. You're not invaluable and irreplaceable. At that point, if they haven't seen you in 9, 10, 11 months, that's not a good relationship. So one of the things I recommend is that you do a needs assessment with your client. And we talked about this on the last QB Power Hour. There's the link to that recording. You can go through that. When you do the needs assessment, you identify problems and opportunities for streamlining their workflows, opportunities for implementing third-party apps that will help their business be more efficient and more profitable. And so that can help you with multiple touch points throughout the year. You can set up a plan. Let's work on this problem and issue first, and then you know next quarter let's work on this one, and the next quarter we work on that one. So you can you know identify needs through that needs assessment, and, and that helps you to create touch points throughout the year. Also, though, consider doing quarterly checkups. Maybe the client's doing everything on their own, and you just do the year-end work and the taxes. Well, let's do a quarterly checkup so I can, I'll jump in, I'll look and see how things look, I'll clean things up every quarter um, so that we don't wait till the end of the year, and that way you're also communicating with the client throughout the year instead of just at year end. 
Another thing is keeping track of the personal info. Like them on social media, like them or their business on social media. Consider using a customer relationship management to keep track of personal info, like their birthdays or kids' names or ages or personal interests. So you can say, you know, like, hi, you know, John, how's Susie? Did she graduate? How was it? You know, you can see these things and create a personal connection there that helps with that loyalty and making you invaluable and irreplaceable. Also consider the personal touch. I remember one time, Again, this was years ago. I was going to teach at Boise. I was going to do some QuickBooks training in Boise, Idaho. Well, that's the headquarters of T-Sheets. In my hotel room, they had put a bottle of wine, a couple of glasses, um, a bottle opener, and they also had Idaho spuds, like the candy potato spuds, um, to give out uh, to the class that I was teaching. They gave me a bunch of those and stuff. So that was a small token. It got my attention. Back though, then, I was like, T-Sheets? Who's T-Sheets, right? It's just another app, right? They got my attention by a personal touch. Didn't cost a lot, wasn't a big deal, but it meant a lot to me, and it got my attention. So consider things like that for your clients, whether it's a card, you can do the send out cards, things like that, or even an e-card, um, small little gifts, $5 Starbucks gift card, something like that, um, check-in calls, you know, hey, you know, John, just want to check, see how you're doing, how things are going, we haven't talked in a while, you know, just out of the blue. Those little things surprise and delight, right? They surprise and delight your clients. If it's local, show up with, you know, bagels one morning or donuts one morning or you know show up with some starbucks one morning you know just little things that help cement that relationship let's client know i'm still here and you are important to me right so those are some of the little things that you can do then what we want to do and let me go ahead and do another i got another poll question here i want to see how are your client relationships now if i can remember how to get my mouse over here to the ipad um, I don't have my second monitor, so I'm using my iPad. And <laughs> I'm handicapped for work. I'm handicapped for walking. <laughs> Just challenged right now, more so than normal. All right. Um, somebody said they like a webinar on Slack. Somebody else wants to know Slack. Is Slack free for QBA? Slack has different subscription levels. There are free up to um, uh, paid ones, depending on the number of people and things like that uh, that you're using. Um, all right, so somebody's in here putting about the um, certified professional public bookkeeper from NACPB. And Deanne, I am well aware of that, and I know a lot of you have your CPB, um, but the guy who founded that <laughs> has, uh, has, has had, he's, he's He's, I think he's in jail. I don't know if he's in jail. There was a lot of tax fraud from him not paying his payroll taxes and things like that, and a lot of um, issues regarding ethics with um, him and his organization. So that's all I'm going to say. I don't like to badmouth anybody or slam anybody, but things change over the years, and something that m once might have been a very reputable, good organization, you might have to double-check things again. So, um so I'm just not sure. Somebody else said he has been paroled. Oh, thank you, Brent. Oh, Brent, you're close to that area, so I'd imagine you would see that again. Um, very good. All right, answer this poll question. Let's move on because we're running out of time. I would love to sit and visit with you all all afternoon. Those of you that can stay on a little later, I have time so I can sit around a little bit later. All right, so let's close this, and let's see how are you all doing with your client relationships. And I'll share that with you. 40% of you are great. You've got pretty close relationships with the clients. 35% not bad you're in touch throughout the year 20% need work and 5% said in a maybe you're not working with clients or, or your staff or something like that so overall that's great 75% of you are in pretty good shape so that's awesome I'm really glad to see that because as accounting professionals sometimes that's one of the areas that we're not so strong at um, but it is really important, especially if we want to be invaluable. And, you know, we talked about relationships with our clients. One of the things I should mention as well, I'd like to spend more time on it, but we can't, relationships with your peers. I saw Jean Terazevitz. Thank you for posting and joining us, Jean. Um, she's great. She is a fishbowl expert, you know, and so I've developed a relationship with her over the years. If I have a client that needs fishbowl inventory, I'm going to refer them to Jean. So you want to develop relationships 
with your peers and also get to know them and what their specialties and, and expertise and what their areas of interest are as well, because it's hard for us to know it all and do it all. <clears throat> Excuse me. So develop those relationships with your peers as well, because um, that's going to help you. Now, the other thing to becoming invaluable and irreplaceable is expanding our advisory services. We talked at the beginning of how everything is being automated. And I mean, shoot, tax returns may be so automated where the W-2s are pulled in automatically, the 1099s are pulled in automatically, little or no deductions nowadays because you've got the enhanced standard deduction. So tax preparation may be fully automated. Our bookkeeping, I talked to you about how the downloaded transactions, how the, the invoice received payments, that whole workflow could be automated to where nobody's doing that. So we have to expand our advisory services. We have to be invaluable. So there's different things that are available. We're going to talk through these briefly, and then I have a poll question. You let me know which ones you say, I want to learn more about this because I don't feel comfortable doing it now. Appify the processes. We had a webinar on that last week where we talked about going, no, last time, we talked about going through and, and doing a needs assessment, and we talked briefly about the app selection, the app integration, training and support, and things like that. And you don't have to know all of these apps inside now. For example, if I've got a client that needs Fishbowl, I don't want to learn Fishbowl. I could say, Gene, could you take this and help them set this up, integrate it, train them, support them on the Fishbowl piece? I'm going to continue doing the rest. You know, so you can work with other accounting professionals um, on this as well. So you don't have to know all thousands of apps that are out there. There's no way we could. But you may want to specialize in an industry that's going to help you. So like, let's say you specialize in construction and you know Noify really well and you know some other apps um, that you're using in the construction industry really well, that's going to help you when you're working with those clients. If you can have more clients in the same industry, that allows you, like I mentioned earlier, the firm down in New Zealand, you can streamline that workflow and those processes where it's automated because all of those clients are the same. So let's say it's a service-based um, business with no inventory, no manufacturing. You may be using the same apps and the same reporting and the same things for all of those clients. It helps streamline and automate your workflow to improve your profitability as well. So that really helps a lot. Being able to help clients with cash flow forecasting, and better yet, not just forecasting it, but improving their cash flow. What are some things that a struggling small business can do to improve cash flow? Could they sell off some old fixed assets? Can they mark down and get rid of old inventory that's just sitting on the shelf? Convert that into cash by marking it down and selling it. Um, should they, you know, different things that they can do, changing their terms with their clients. Did you realize that if you've got an invoice that's net 14, you will get paid faster than if you put due on receipt? Due on receipt is no set deadline, so it's no big deal. They wait and they wait and they pay you when they think about it. Net 14, you actually get paid faster than due on receipt. So there's things that you can do and recommend to the client to help them improve their cash flow. Same thing on improving profitability, helping them increase their sales, focusing on sales items that are the most profitable. You can help them look at, look at those things. Helping them decrease expenses. You know, have you called your, your, you know, landlord lately to, to reevaluate rent and see if you can get that reduced or if get your insurance reevaluated or vendors. Now that you've been in business a long time, maybe they could give you better terms from your vendors. All of these are things that we can suggest and recommend to help clients improve their profitability. We see the numbers. We can see where there's opportunities for improvement. The client sometimes doesn't see that. So we can help them with that. You know, if the suppliers increase their costs, that's going to affect their profitability unless we you know, can help them to see, hey, you need to increase your prices as well or you need to make some other changes. And so that's a huge area where we can help that client with that. Monitoring key ratios or KPIs or key financial ratios, if they've got a bank loan, they probably have loan covenants that require them to have a certain current ratio, a specific debt to equity ratio and things like that. You can monitor those and ensure they're in compliance with those loan covenants. There's apps that make this really helpful and easy. You can help the client with buy, sell, or lease decisions. You know, have, wouldn't you hate it? Client comes to you a year in to do their taxes and they're like, oh, I sold this and I bought this and you know, I did that. And, 
And you're like, oh my gosh, if you would have called me, if you would have structured it this way, you could have saved $10,000 in taxes. I was afraid to call you because it costs money, right? We don't want our clients afraid to call us because we can help them save money, right? So buy, sell, lease decisions, hiring employees. If they increase the prices, what could that impact do on sales, growing or expanding their business? When a business is growing, that's a very risky time for that company. They can grow themselves right out of business if they don't manage that cash flow properly because money's going out as they're growing and it might be going out way faster than that money's coming in. Um, so lots of areas here that we can expand our advisory services. These are things QuickBooks Assistant can't do. These are things that automated workflow can't do. This is where we really can be invaluable and irreplaceable for our clients. And you know, I love it. It's personally so satisfying because I feel like part of the business. As their business grows and thrives, I'm like, woohoo, they're doing it, you know, and they're achieving their goals. And in the same time, I'm achieving my goals. It is very rewarding to do these and see these businesses thrive. And that's what we want to do is help them to thrive and grow those businesses. Um, so now, as promised, I have this last poll question for you. I want to know which of these advisory services so what are some of these advisory services that you feel like, you know, I would like to do this, but I never learned about that. I didn't have a class on, you know, helping them with their improved profitability or with cash flow or um, monitoring key ratios. I didn't learn about that you know, when I took my bookkeeping courses or when I took my accounting classes. You know, I didn't learn about that in the QuickBooks certification. You know, there's, <laughs> there's some things you don't learn about um, in other places. So what is it you would like to know more about? And then these are things that can help me create, you know, webinars and good content to help you all continue growing and thriving and growing your practice, all right? So somebody said all of the above. Thank you. <laughs> um, and somebody, this is great. Thank you, Lisa. Almost every time I'm asked to do more, it's assumed it's included in the package. Have to have the conversation with existing clients that more work is more money, not going well. Lisa, you know, that is that is a very good point. We need to set up, and, and those of you that have to jump off and leave us, um, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, we, I will stick around for another, you know, 10 minutes. However long you guys have questions, I can stick around. So if you don't have to jump off, hang with us. But when it comes to scope creep, and Denise says it's a huge problem, we need to have an engagement letter that clearly defines what is included in our services. And then a paragraph that says additional you know, work and services may be added um, as a change order, if you will, and those will be discussed as the time comes up. Um, and let me go ahead and close this poll question here, and I will share that with you quickly. And there's a good spread. You could answer more than one on this. Um, 58% app selection and integration, 59% cash flow forecasting, 48 on helping clients improve profitability, 34% budgeting. So very good, and I just pulled a few. So if you have others that you really wanna know, let me know that as well. Um, but when it comes to scope creep, we have it clearly defined in our engagement letter um, what we're covering and what's included and what's not included. So when client says, oh, you know, Michelle, I'm preparing for a bank loan, can you help me get the, the the forecasted financials together. I'd be glad to do that. I'm so glad you asked. And, you know, as we indicated in the engagement letter, when we talked about that at the beginning of the year, you know, we can do any additional services, but it requires a change order, to, which is like an addendum to the engagement letter. So what exactly is it you need? What is it you want? What is your time frame? It's going to be an extra $500 and we can do that for you. You implement a change order, all right? It's no problem. Sometimes your clients will ask you to do something that's outside the scope of your engagement, but it's a little thing. It's not that big a deal. So what I would do is I would say, well, you know, technically we should do a change order for this because it's not part of our engagement letter. However, it's not going to be a big deal, and we'll go ahead and we'll just do that for you this time um, without charging you for it. In the future, you know, if this continues, we may need to start charging you for this. So sometimes you want to do things for as a goodwill gesture, but let them know this is a goodwill gesture, right? Normally we would charge you for this, but, you know, we've got a little extra time this month, so we'll do it. Or, you know, whatever you want to say. Um, so 
managing scope creep is our responsibility. If we are doing things that are outside the scope of our engagement and not charging for it, that's not the client's fault. They're asking, it's your fault to say, yes, we can do that with a change order um, or with additional fees, you know, so it's our job as the professional to do that. You know, if I go into, I don't know, get my, get a tooth filled and the dentist says, oh, well, would you like a cleaning as well? Or would you like this as well? You know, add on services. Yeah, I would. I don't expect that to be free. I expect I'm paying for the additional services. You go in and get your hair cut and then all of a sudden they want you to do an extra a conditioning treatment or an extra this or an extra that you know all those extras are an add-on fee we need our clients to know all the extras are an add-on fee okay so that they know what to expect and it's no surprises then so these are all things though areas where we can expand those advisory services as a reminder here's the upcoming events I would love to see you in different cities across the US there's um, a lot of other trainers going to a lot more cities um, so check those out as well as well as the scaling new heights it's still time to go to that in Salt Lake City Utah it's a great place um, love to see you there as well as QuickBooks Connect so with that said I'm gonna go ahead and continue to answer a couple questions for those of you that can stick around for a little bit um, Somebody says, I feel that the add-on services, the clients always think they are asking for easy requests and should not be charged for it. And Marie, that's where it, it's, it's something we have to communicate to the client because just because something is easy, the reason it's easy is because we have years of knowledge, experience, expertise that makes it easy for us. Think about this. You go to a lawyer. You say, Mr. Lawyer, I got a speeding ticket. Can you fix it for me, right? And the lawyer's like, sure thing, it's $250, it's $500. That is super easy for that attorney to do that, right? It takes him a matter of minutes, and it's not points against your license, it's just a fine and blah, 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 right? Super easy for that lawyer, but he's value pricing it because that lawyer went to college for four years, went to law school, passed the law exam, pays for his continuing professional education to maintain his law, sort of his law license and all that stuff. It's all of that experience and expertise that makes it easy for him to do that. So we need to rec recognize the value that we have is the reason it is easy because of all of our years of experience and education and all that stuff. And, and we need to let the client know, you know, okay, yes, we can do that. Um, it's one of those things that we've done a lot because of our experience and our expertise and it's going to cost you this much. You know, I mean, you, you've got to communicate to that client there. Um, Let's see, I can't read my glasses on anymore, sorry. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this question over here to the big monitor, or the laptop, at least it's bigger over there. Nope, it stayed the same resolution. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, somebody else said, thank you so much for this, and my first and found it very valuable. Well, that's really good. When purchasing a new laptop, what should one look out for? You know, Karen, any more, any of these laptops can do what you need. So it, it's really kind of dependent upon you. How many desktop clients do you still have? Do you still use? Do you use cloud services? Like I don't store much on my desktop computer or my laptop computer anymore because I have things in the cloud. Um, so you don't need a huge hard drive storage space, things like that. To me, when I'm buying a computer, I want a laptop that's lightweight because I'm traveling a lot. So that's really important to me. So um, the other thing, though, that I do, I get a new laptop, I, I'd like to say every two years, but I usually get itchy about every year, <laughs> and I buy a new one. So I don't buy, you know, super expensive ones that I plan on keeping three to five years. You know, I get a good brand, a good quality, um, and one that's lightweight, because that's super important to me. But the great thing with the cloud now, you can do so much with anything there. Somebody says, I use a, have a Chromebook, and I'm trying to get used to it. I almost got a Chromebook, but I do so much with PowerPoint, and creating PowerPoints, and presenting at these various events. I wasn't sure a Chromebook would work for me, and I know you can use the Google um, aspect Google Slides and things like that but I'm not familiar with that it's a steep learning curve for me so I didn't go with a Chromebook but I know a lot of people that are if you're just doing QuickBooks and stuff you can use a Chromebook um, that definitely works fine okay let's see a couple of other questions here let me ask the last polling question for you all it's just how much did you learn I'll launch that while we're going through some of these questions 
Somebody says, where do you recommend storing client info in the cloud? Um, that is a great question because there's a lot of storage options out there. You want something that's secure, especially if you're storing sensitive financial information like W-2s that have a social security number on there, bank records that might have a bank account number on there. If you're storing sensitive financial information, now receipts, I don't consider those sensitive. You know, if you see a receipt from Starbucks, it's not that big a deal, or supplies that they bought. I don't think those are sensitive as, as much as social security numbers and bank account numbers and things like that. So um, if you need secure cloud storage, I would look at share, um, ShareFile from Citrix. Um, I think ShareFiles with Citrix, yes. Anyway, ShareFile is definitely one of them. Um, there's some others out there, but things like um, Dropbox, Google Drive, things like that are not secure for sensitive financial information. It's great for receipts, but not sensitive financial information. So that's something to think about. Smart Vault, um, thank you, Michael. That was the other one I was trying to think of, and I couldn't. Smart Vault, I think, is also very secure for accounting professionals, so check that out as well. Somebody said, Michelle, thanks. I need to memorize your lingo. I need practice. <laughs> you know that's just what it is, is practice practice talking like you know out loud to a client so that it feels comfortable for you so that it feels like second nature to you and just remember this when you go for services when you go to the dentist when you go to a lawyer when you go to a mechanic when you go to somebody to get their hair done you don't push back on them oh my gosh your fees are too high why are you using you know those tools why don't you use this tool you know why you know i want you i'm in getting my hair done i want you to do all this extra stuff and not charge me for it. why do we let clients do that to us or make us think that we need to put in our mindset that we are a professional service provider just like all these other service providers you would not do that to them do not let your clients do that to you if there's a client that's doing that to you or trying to do that to you, maybe that's not the kind of client for you. And there are some clients you are better off without. All right, so keep that in mind. Don't let them push you around. You know, we've got to have our rules for our business and just stick to them. These are our policies. This is our procedures. You know, this is how we do things. And you know, you can change that if you want to. Sometimes for a nonprofit, sometimes for friends and family, you know, sometimes you can change things. That's your, your call. But you should try to have set, established procedures and things like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that last poll question. Thank you. A lot of you, major, vast, 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 overwhelming majority of you did learn something new, so that's great. Um, so very good. Um, let's see. We still have over 200 people here, so I'm glad to keep answering questions. So if you guys want to put some in there, um, uh, da, 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 I'm looking at some of the others that I can answer. Somebody said, laptop purchase, I like to look at how many ports there are to connect extra monitors, et cetera. You know, Jenny, that's important too, like how many USB ports or the USB-C ports and things like that. But you can always plug in a, a thing that's got four or five ports on it. Like I have a, a, a gadget, I forget what you call it, <laughs> it's a dongle, I guess, that has multiple ports on it. It has a port for the internet, for plugging into um, HDMI, USB ports on it. It's got a variety of ports on it, um, a multi-port adapter. So it plugs into one port of my PC or my laptop, and then I can plug it into a number of different things. But that is something to consider. Um, let's see, where do you, oh, I answered that one. Um, what is the best way to make an appointment with me through Long for Success? Yeah, if you go to Long Through Success, um, you can send me an email there. Send me an email. Initial stages to gain clients, fairly new to accounting, just curious on where to begin. You know, that's a great question. First of all, when you're, you're, when you're looking for new clients, whether you're just starting or ongoing, you need to tell anyone and everyone what type of services you're offering. I'm doing this type of work. I don't want tax clients. You know, let them to know the types of services you're offering, what types of clients would be an ideal client for you. Pass out business cards like they're candy. Order 500 or 1,000 of them. Leave them places you go. 
you know, leave them in restaurants, uh, leave them in different places, you know, give them to the owner of a small business that you're frequenting. Hey, just want to let you know, I'm an accounting professional and QuickBooks expert. If you ever need help, let me know. You know, just pass these things out because you never know where somebody's going to come back to you. And doing that online as well in social media, posting things out there, you know, post out there. I just got certified in QuickBooks. I attended XYZ conference. I attended QB Power Hour, learned great stuff. That's letting them know that you're a QuickBooks expert. So letting everybody you know, know that you're looking for referrals, both online and in real life. And what I did when I first started out, we didn't have social media. You know, we didn't have the networking and the, the, the things that we do today, which I think makes it a lot easier. You know, back when I had to walk through snow this tall and all this, back in my day, <laughs> I went to City Hall. I got a list of all the new companies that had got a new business license over the past year, and I started cold calling. Wanted to welcome you to the city. Glad to see you got a new business. Wanted to let you know I'm an accountant, and if you need help, just give me a call. Otherwise, welcome to the community. That's all. And, you know, I got my first few clients from that. One guy called me like one or two years later, and when he finally needed some help with his taxes or something, but he kept on to my name and number that long. He wrote it down and kept it and, and called me back. I couldn't believe it. I would have lost it. By then. I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to find that name and phone number. So that's how I got started was just cold calling and just, you know, introducing myself to people looking for, you know, somebody that needed help and you know the other thing i highly recommend go into the quickbooks marketing hub and to it has a marketing hub for us now we can order quickbooks logo merchandise walk around with quickbooks on quickbooks t-shirt quickbooks hat quickbooks pen it is amazing how many people will ask you questions when they see quickbooks i was on vacation with my husband one time and we were going down to the free breakfast so i just had on a quickbooks t-shirt and they had these booths set up with local small businesses, you know, little jewelry stands and things like that. And a lady says, oh, you know QuickBooks? I need help with X, Y, and Z. I'm so, and I said, you know, can I talk to you when I come back from breakfast? And she's like, yeah, sure. You know, so I got some work out of that because she saw QuickBooks on the shirt that I was wearing. So logo merchandise is a great way to initiate conversation. Wear it everywhere you go, the grocery store, the bank, the, the kids little league you know whatever you're doing if you're wearing quickbooks people see that ask you questions always have your contact information ready on your phone to send it to them or business cards in your pocket okay all right you guys have been absolutely fabulous and i would love to continue on here we still have a vast majority of you here um and this is great somebody else says i wear my quickbooks stuff at the gym I'm sure they're sick of seeing it. You know, Marsha, I've been going to physical therapy for my foot for quite some time now, and I wear QuickBooks stuff there as well as T-sheets. One day I had on a T-sheets T-shirt, and somebody came up and asked me about that. He's for the city, and they've been looking for a new time tracking system, and, you know, he started asking me about T-sheets. So, yes, wearing that stuff at the gym is a great idea. Anywhere you're out and, you know, around and people will see you, um, it's a great opportunity to wear that. So, all of that is great. So, all right. I think you guys have been great. Um, oh, thank you. Somebody, we love to listen to you. You are a wealth of information and are very pleasant. Oh, thank you. I love having you guys joining me, especially now when I can't get out and about as much. <laughs> it is great to have you guys uh, listening and joining me for this QB Power Hour. Send me your comments, your suggestions for future QB Power Hours. My goal is to not just keep you up to date on QuickBooks, but to help you have a successful practice and a successful business. So keep sending me the stuff that you want. I'm here to meet your needs. Um, and share it with your peers and other people on social media. Tell them how great it is so we get more followers and more people joining us, because that's always awesome too. So for now though, I'm gonna say thank you all. I will edit this video to cut the beginning portion out and get it posted to YouTube later this afternoon. So uh, see you in the Facebook group. QB Power Users or my LinkedIn group. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.